Hello everybody, my name is Jamie Pierce and I am Director of the Scottish Graduate School of Social Science and it gives me a great pleasure to be able to talk to you briefly today about our postdoctoral fellowships scheme that we run at the SGSS. Uh, it's a scheme that's been running for three years now and we have a number of successful fellows who have been through this program um, and the good news is it will be continuing into 2022 so we look forward to making some further awards uh, during 2022. Um, the grants that are provided uh, through this scheme are for uh, 12 months or for a year or um, uh, two years part-time and the intention the overall ambition of the scheme is to give uh, the fellows who are awarded uh, these, these uh, postdoctoral fellows the time to prepare for a successful career in research, either within academia or uh, elsewhere. So preparing for a number of research related um, career opportunities. The fellows must spend all of their working time, 100% of their working time on the fellowship, whether part-time or full-time. And fellows aren't able to take secondary paid employment during the course of the grant. The intention is that the fellows will be spending all of their working time on the grant. In terms of the programme of activities or the activities that a fellow might be do might uh, undertake during the course of uh, the fellowship, these could include, but not uh, necessarily an exhaustive list, but they might include putting out publications, producing publications from PhD work. Um, in order to establish that track record of research that's so important for the next stage of, of uh, postdoctoral careers. It might include engaging with a range of different audiences to communicate research findings, so getting the, the messages out from the research, uh, sharing it with key stakeholders and others that are interested in the, in the research findings. So it's pushing the, the impact of the, of the research from the PhD. It can also be about building network, networks to develop impact related opportunities um, and inform and support further development in this area. So there's plenty of opportunities here to uh, get involved in uh, pursuing the impact and knowledge exchange activities in the research. It could also be about placements and internships, um, developing professional and transferable skills, uh, understanding of user organisations, uh, provided, of course, that this is right, very much central to the fellowship. So it could involve working with a, a, a non-academic collaborator. Uh, it can also include uh, training, further training to improve, improve research and other related skills. Uh, it can also include developing further research funding, uh, so putting together proposals for the, for the next stage of the research plan. Uh, it can include a limited amount of research, so the guidance is that this should include no more than 25% of the fellowship time being dedicated to new research. Um, uh, but again, it needs to, uh, to the, any new research needs to uh, uh, emerge from uh, the PhD research, it needs to be closely related to the PhD research programme. And it can also include, for example, research visits, which may be internationally, hopefully in a post-COVID world, uh, uh, but also to other leading institutions around the UK for the, research, for the purposes of research, collaboration, training, access to data, or other resources that may not be available at your home university. So this is, that gives you sort of a flavour of the activities. And I should say all of this is available on the SGSS web pages. If you look under postdoctoral fellows, you can see much more detail about the guidance of what sort of activities are supported. Another important element of the postdoctoral fellows is mentorship and mentoring. Um, all fellows who are awarded are, are expected to have a mentor who is based at the university where the fellowship is held. So it's important to uh, identify at an early stage a uh, potential mentor and this mentor should certainly have some experience and uh, interest uh, in the area of research uh, so the kind of thing that the applicant wants to, 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 uh, to work on but should not normally be the applicant's PhD supervisor so different, a different individual to the PhD supervisor but nonetheless someone who's got a substantive interest in the, in the field of research. And then in terms of eligibility, there's some, some quite, um, quite specific rules around eligibility. 
um, uh, applicants, first of all, it's important that the applicants haven't had a previous ESL, uh, have not had a previously previous ESLC funded fellowship. Um, to be eligible, um, they need to have been awarded a PhD or have, have passed a viva with minor amendments by the application deadline. And we don't know exactly when that deadline is at, at this stage. Uh, that should become uh, clearer later in the year, but um, it's probably going to be at some point in March 2022. So it must have passed, must have been awarded the PhD or passed the viva with minor amendments, likely by March 2022. Now, they must have also been awarded their PhD by the fellowship start date of the 1st of October 2022. And then finally, there must have been no more than 12 months active postdoctoral experience since passing the Viva, allowing for career breaks uh, by, by a date that's again likely to be March 2022. So this is for someone within the sort of first 12 months of their PhD and have not had more experience, more research experience uh, than, than, than that. In terms of how these are assessed, the applications are assessed. Well, again, there's much more detail on the web detail on the web page. But just to give you a little bit of a flavour, there are four key criteria that um, the panel look at when assessing the applications. Firstly, the quality of the work program. So, is the work clearly defined? Are the object objectives achievable, realistic, within the 12-month period? Are the proposed activities well justified in terms of supporting? the longer term career aspirations of the applicant. So the quality of the research program is, is one. Second is value for money. Are costs clearly and adequately justified? And then thirdly, impact and outputs. Um, is the planned output during the fellowship appropriate and attainable? Are you planning to produce something that's uh, attainable and appropriate during that 12 month period? Um, and are there adequate plans um, to share the results with both academic audiences, but also with non-academic audiences as appropriate? So have you got a, a plan for knowledge exchange? And also consideration of any uh, ethical issues, again, features as part of the assessment criteria. So that's the sort of thing, as I say, you can read much of that in much more detail on the SGSS web pages. In terms of dates of the diary, here's, we don't have the, uh, the exact dates yet because the call hasn't been launched by the ESRC, but this is roughly what we anticipate. We imagine the call from the ESRC will go in late October. There'll be a deadline for stage one applicants to come in, in uh, sometime in early January, so when you'll need to get your application in. This will be reviewed at your university uh, immediately afterwards by mid-February. Um, uh, uh, and then the, the universities will be putting forward their nominated applicants. Uh, then there'll be a full of peer review of those shortlisted applications uh, mid-March to early May. And then a final selection panel meets uh, usually in late May to make some final decisions. And this gives you a sense as well on this slide about the, um, about the kind of level of interest. So just looking at the data from 2021, so our most recent uh, Round, you can see here there are 87 applications across 10 institutions. The universities put forward 40 of those applications. They thought they were the strongest and the ones most likely to be funded. And then 35 of those progressed the peer review stage. And so the final, the final panel looked at those 35 and made, we were able, we were, we were funded to make eight awards. And so um, we, were, we were very pleased to be able to do that. So I hope that gives you a sense of our postdoctoral fellowship scheme. As I say, this is just a, a brief overview, uh, but there'll be lots of opportunities over the course of the coming months to ask questions. Uh, there's lots of people within your own universities who've got a lot of experience of this now. It's been running for three years. And of course, we at the SGSS will be pleased to answer any questions. And as I say, uh, lots of information on the SGSS webpage. So do have a look at that in the first instance. Um, I think I'll leave it there, but I hope you found that useful. Um, and thanks very much for uh, for tuning in to this video.